بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم uh, my dear students of Ajman University College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences second year students and the course is pharmaceutical dosage forms uh, one uh, uh, let's uh, continue with uh, what we left in uh, last uh, presentation uh, last things we were talking about was regarding the uh, different suppository bases and we classified them to uh, oleogenous bases and water soluble or miscible uh, bases and the miscellaneous uh, bases which are uh, not really oleogenous or water soluble uh, it's somewhere in between uh, uh, such as the hydrogel bases uh, today we will talk about methods of preparing sub suppositories. So how do we prepare suppositories? Now if we want uh, to prepare suppositories in small scale, yani to produce few number of suppositories, then the oldest method and the simplest one is the hand rolling. Hand rolling uh, you don't use any uh, machine or equipment uh, for doing this and uh, this actually works uh, specifically for cacao butter base cacao butter base okay and uh, what you do exactly uh, is you put the cacao butter grated cacao butter grated yani matroon uh, like for example uh, as particles Rather, uh, rather than uh, like uh, a butter okay so you get the grated uh, cacao butter and then you triturate the cacao butter with the other ingredients mainly the drug we are talking about here so you triturate it in a mortar and pistol then you take it out from the uh, mortar and then you start kneading it. Kneading yani yajin. Okay? So you knead it uh, uh, as uh, well as you can. Okay? And then you start uh, rolling this cacao butter uh, as a cylinder or as a pipe. Okay? So you will roll it. See these pieces? These pieces have been cut from. Uh, the uh, uh, roll that you made from cacao butter and other ingredients. Uh, if you go to the uh, Google, you will see how they do this. Uh, but what happens is after you triturate uh, your uh, cacao butter along with the drag, uh, you knead it and then you uh, roll it into a pipe, into a cylinder. And after that, you cut it, as you see here. This is a tile, okay, in this tile you will see even uh, a scale, okay, and uh, what you do after you roll the uh, cacao butter with the drag, you cut it into the appropriate number of pieces. What do I mean by appropriate number? I mean that if you are adding a drag for 10 suppositories, then you will cut it to 10 pieces, okay. If you uh, added a drug for five suppositories, then you will cut it to five pieces. So, uh, on this board or on this uh, tile, you will cut the uh, pipe into equal sizes. Okay, so this ruler will help you, help you to do that. After you cut it, Okay, Taban, you can cut it with a spatula or something that is flat. After you do that, you go to one end of the uh, piece here, okay, and taper it. Taper it, yani, in order for it to take the uh, tapered shape here, so that it can be easily inserted. Okay, now we will talk about uh, advantage and disadvantage of using such method. First of all, you need to recognize that this is only for preparing few number of suppositories. Uh, number two, you need to know that uh, this does not involve heat. 
And you remember the effect of heat on cacao butter. We said that cacao uh, butter is polymorphic. If you heat it above 35 degrees, then there is uh, the probability of getting metastable uh, cacao butter that melts less than 30 degrees, for example, 27 degrees Celsius. So by preparing cacao butter with the drag without heating it, this will avoid ish getting to the metastable cacao butter and you will not have the problem of melting below 30 degrees Celsius. Type. طبعاً this is an advantage, صح ولا لا? Now the disadvantage of uh, this method, you know, if you don't do good rolling and good kneading, okay, when you do, when you prepare the uh, roll, okay, let me draw it for you. Okay, now suppose this is the roll that you prepared. This is the cylinder or the roll you prepared. Now it's very possible that from inside there will be some air entrapment, okay, and cracks. These can happen if you are not experienced in doing or in preparing cacao uh, roll in this way. And uh, because of uh, unwell kneading, yani you did not knead it well, you did not roll it well, so you have here ish holes, and there will be air entrapment, and of course, this will affect many things, including how much drug is in each uh, suppository. Okay. Uh, let's now talk about the second method, which you can use also in small scale and in large scale. This one you can use it only in small scale. Uh, compression molding can be used in small scale and large scale, and here it involve it involves ish. Uh, after mixing the grated material, and uh, mainly they use here the PEG. We already studied that PEG is a suppository base that is water miscible. And uh, in many cases, we use uh, more than one uh, PEG type because uh, PEGs exist in different molecular weights. So we can control, for example, the melting point the hardness of such suppositories. So this method is mainly used ish hakena for uh, PEG. So there is a special machine that force the uh, grated, grated hakena yani, uh, cut, mabshur yani, bil arabi mabshur. Kif lwaahad lamma yubshur lkhiyar, yubshur onions, etc. It's a similar thing. So these grated materials that are already mixed with the medication, okay, uh, they will be forced into mold. يعني راح نضغط عليهم like extrusion. So these materials will move into mold. Mold اللي هو shape of the suppository. So these materials will be ash will be forced into uh, the mold. طيب uh, طبعا the process itself generates some or little heat and this little heat will help in the extrusion process but remember that there is uh, no really high heat involved just little bit that can uh, facilitate the extrusion uh, process طيب هون we have a problem in preparing suppositories uh, by uh, compression molding. This problem does not exist fi il hand rolling. But the same problem exists fi fusion molding. Yani fi inna common problem between the compression molding and the fusion molding which I will discuss later. And this is related uh, to uh, having the suppository in a specific volume which is in the mold طبعاً, the volume of the mold what controls the volume is the mold itself but you know for drugs that we use uh, in suppositories we use weights 
اذا هنا في عندنا وي هاف فوليومز اوكي هنا في عندنا فوليوم في عندنا فوليوم بات وات وي نيد ان ذا سبوزيتوري از ا ويت ف وي ذير از ذس كايند اوف بروبلم ويتش اي ويل ديسكاس ليتر اند اتس ريليتد تو دنسيتي فاكتورز طيب this is about the compression molding is in the mixed material of suppository base and the drug is forced into a mold so there is no uh, high heat involved and the little heat generated from the process will help in the extrusion extrusion يعني when you force something through an opening هيك معنا okay fusion molding actually fusion molding is uh, can be used with all bases طبعاً this is something good and must be used with most of them يعني كتير عنا من البازز you cannot do it by compression molding or hand rolling but with fusion molding you can do it now most suppository bases you must do it in by fusion fusion molding method and it can work with all suppository bases طيب fusion molding involves heating the suppository base until it melts طبعا preferably we don't heat it above the melting point okay and then uh, dispersing or dissolving the drug يعني حسب if the drug dissolves then you can dissolve it in the melted base اللي هو liquid now okay you can dissolve it if it, it, it does dissolve Or if it doesn't, then you need to disperse it. يعني بيكون زي particles dispersed in the melted base. Now this mixture needs to be poured into suppository mold. لازم نديره وين في suppository mold. I will show you, you know, in small scale mold like what you see here. You see openings here, okay, and come openings. Now you pour this melted materials اللي هي suppository base and the drug in these openings اللي هي حكينا المولد these will ايش will make the shape of the suppository and the volume of the suppository according to the openings here طيب اذا we pour it there and we leave it until it coangeal coangeal يعني solidify Then we remove it from the mold. طبعا in some cases we need to lubricate to lubricate these openings with materials such as mineral oil, glycerine, depending on the base I am using. يعني if I'm using oleogenous base, then I can use glycerine for lubrication. If I'm using water soluble base, then I can use mineral oil. Anyway, so this lubrication sometimes uh, required in order to facilitate the removal of suppositories from uh, the mold. So you may lubricate and then add the melted material containing the uh, suppository base with the drug dispersed or dissolved and you leave it in the mold until it solidify, cools down and solidify. Then you can open the mold and remove the suppositories. طيب again here we have a problem. Okay, what is the problem? As the case with compression molding, you know we have specific volume here. Okay, and what we need? We need a weight. يعني I need a weight inside. Okay, weight of drug. But what I have here is a volume. So how can I solve this problem? Okay. I will explain it to you now in more details. Okay. Suppose you have this. This is one of the uh, openings. I show you in here. Of course, there will be other openings in the same way with the same size. Okay. Ada huwa el mold. This is the mold. This is the opening where you pour your melted material. طيب now suppose the following. Let's say you want to use cacao butter, for example. Okay. 
so if you use cacao butter okay this is cacao butter now suppose you are using cacao butter here okay uh, with no drug at all is an fish drug let's say for this is an example there is no drug at all and the weight of this نحكيله blank suppository blank suppository لأنه ما فيهاش drug because it does not have any drug let's say the weight is two grams okay are you with me okay so now you have a blank suppository the weight is two gram now suppose you want to put 0.2 gram of a drug now probably the first thing that comes to your mind is in order to have two grams of the drug in this suppository you need to remove 0.2 gram of the base عشان ايش 0.2 gram يجي here comes here and then it removes 0.2 gram is an you think طبعاً, which is incorrect in no, that's why you need 1.8 gram من base and 0.2 gram from the drug well that's not correct the reason is most probably the drug density is different from the base density يعني the density of both materials most probably ish are not the same so they have different densities طب شو يعني different density what does it mean when you put 0.2 gram here actually it will remove a volume مش weight a volume equivalent to this 0.2 gram this volume that is removed from here will not be equal to the volume of the 0.2 gram of the drug unless إلا إذا they have the same density okay يعني تخيلوا الدنسيتي هي إيش gram per volume فهل ال 0.2 gram تاعت الدرج وتاعت البيز will have the same volume since they have surely they will have different density in this case no it's not the same volume is an I, I need to know what is how much 0.2 gram will take from the base will it take 0.2 gram we said most probably not unless they have the same density صح ولا لا طب كيف نحل هاي المشكلة how do we solve this problem now this can be solved by calculating or knowing what we call اللي هو density factor طيب شو density factor طبعا it has other name such as displacement value or replacement value طيب what is this density factor or displacement value or replacement value شو هو it's the weight of the drag وزن الدواء weight of the drag that displaces a weight from the base okay يعني for example let's say I added here 0.2 gram هذا example and this 0.2 gram removes 0.1 gram يعني اثنين عندهم نفس ال volume اللي هو 0.2 gram وال 0.1 gram they have the same volume again if I add 0.2 gram of the drug and this resulted in displacing ايش 0.1 gram from the base وقتها بصير ايش displacement factor او density factor it will be 0.2 divided by 0.1 يعني راح يكون الجواب عندنا قديش it will be 2 بهاي الحالة راح يكون عندنا 2 طب شو اليونت it has no units لانه هو عبارة عن weight divided by weight we said that if 0.2 grams displaces 0.1 gram from the base then the displacement value will be equal to 0.2 divided by 0.1 طب how can we do this calculation and know what is the uh, displacement value we will not discuss it uh, uh, يعني in this uh, topic it's not difficult 
but you may have it in the lab uh, but we will consider here that you have the displacement value okay and comet displacement value or density factor or a replacement value now if i ask you okay can you define how we know should equation to added density factor we know it's the weight of the drag by the weight of base displaced okay again weight of the drag divided by the weight of base displaced طبعاً here weight and here weight that's why the answer has no units okay now if I want you to define density factor or displacement value how do you define it okay consider this equation now you have a value let's say one or two it means this is the uh, displacement it's the parts of the drag or weight of the drag that displaces one part of the base or one gram of the base okay the weight of the drag that displaces uh, one part of the base the, the more appropriate definition here the number of parts of the drag that displaces one part of the base هنا بنحكي شو بنقصد في البارت اللي هو الوزن for example gram, kilogram, milligram it doesn't matter okay طيب uh, so still it's not very clear how can we use the density factor in such calculation طبعا first let me explain this if 0.2 gram of the drug displaces 0.1 gram from the base and this is the replacement factor then what will be the weight of the medicated suppository يعني, okay I will remove 0.1 from here I will add 0.2 شو بصير عنا شوفوا see here what did I write 1.8 is this correct now it is not correct it will be 1.9 why it will be 1.9 because only 0.1 has been displaced is and should be total 1.9 plus 0.2 gram from the drag and the answer will be 2.1 gram suppository medicated medicated يعني فيها الدواء suppository now if i ask you to prepare let's say 10 suppositories then you can multiply this into 10 and this into 10 so 1.9 multiplied by 10 راح يكون عندنا 19 grams 0.2 grams multiplied into 10 we will have 2 grams now I can do the formulation سواء for compression molding or for fusion molding is it clear? okay now for me to explain it even uh, further in more detail let's see the following example now uh, look at the example and pay attention to what is written aspirin should aspirin is a drug right has a density factor in cacao butter now there are two things mentioned here one the drug to base drug and base the density factor to be given you need to have these two things you must have the drug and in which base if you change the drug the density factor will change if you change the base the density factor will also change isn't in any given a problem or example uh, uh, if I want to give you the density factor I must mention what drug and what base must be mentioned okay طيب. now he says the density factor is 1.3 see there is no unit here if suppository is to contain 0.3 gram of aspirin is an شو هنا معطى معطى you have here the amount of the drug that should be in each suppository 
the amount of the drug in each suppository. So it, there should be 0.3 gram. بعدين شوف انتبهوا if the blank suppository is any blank suppository it means suppository without a drug weighs 2 gram. طب شو أصدو هون what what does it mean here? It means if I want to prepare this suppository but without having a drug, يعني suppository كاملة, full suppository but blank one without any drug, then the weight will be 0.2 gram. Okay. Now you need it, you are needed, or you are requested to prepare a 12 suppository. Is that bit naish? 12 suppository. بدنا 12 suppository هاي رقم واحد نمبر 2 each suppository should contain 0.3 gram of aspirin طيب نمبر 3 is that blank suppository weighs 2 gram طيب نمبر 4 the density factor is 1.3 اوكي now you need to calculate for 12 suppository, how much drug do you need to use? طبعاً, if the drug in each suppository is equal to 0.3 gram, then for 12 suppository, you need 12 multiplied into 0.3 gram, and this will be equal to a dash 3.6 gram. Is it clear? Okay. Now, what about the base? Can I say 2 gram multiplied into 12? No, this is wrong. Because some drug, 0.3, will displace a certain weight from the point, from the 2 gram. Yani that 0.3 gram of aspirin, okay, will remove something from the blank suppository. طيب, أديش راح تشيل? Will it take 0.3 gram from the blank? As I already explained, no. This will not happen because both will have different densities. طيب, how do I solve this problem? Well, with the density factor 1.3 right this is the uh, density factor given لو 1.3 طب شو معناتها 1.3 it means هلا شوفوا هنا انتبهوا how i translated it means 1.3 gram from the drug will ايش will displace 1 gram from the base اذا هذا هو البيز اوكي وهذا عندنا ايش للدرج طيب هل أنا عندي هذا الشغلة؟ Do I do I have 1.3 gram of the drug? لا. The drug in each suppository will be equal to 0.3 gram. فإذا هنا I will write 0.3 gram from the drug will displace how much? طبعا to answer this you will multiply 0.31 divided by 1.3 gram. Let's see. The calculator, واحد, one multiplied 0.3 gram divided by 1.3 equals, طبعاً هون 0.23, okay? So the answer here, اللي هو إيش حكينا 0.23 صح? Gram. Yes. طيب معناته if I want to add 0.3 gram في the blank suppository how much do I have to remove from the blank suppository from the base I need to remove ايش 0.23 gram طيب according to this شو بصير ال ال base بصير عنا ال base 2 gram minus ايش 0.23 gram who displaced and removed base we will remove from the 2 gram base we will remove 
0.23 gram from the base in order to put the 0.3 gram of the drug. So this will be equal to ish 1.77. Okay, a gram. Type. So each suppository will contain 0.3 gram of the drug and 1.77 gram of the base. Type. We already calculated how much drug do I need in the formulation. I need 3.6 gram of aspirin. Type how much base I need. Type for one suppository, it's 1.77 gram. Type what about for 12 suppository? How much do I need? Then you have to multiply. Hello, one point seven seven multiplied into 12 and you have 21.24 gram essential formulation taco what is your formulation you need to take 21.24 gram of the base the cacao butter melt it okay then add to it 3.6 gram of aspirin and then pour it into the mold and then ish allow it to congeal and then you will have your uh, medicated suppository type if i ask you what is the weight what is the weight of the medicated suppository type it's equal to what to amount of the drug, this is medicated suppository, which is 0 0.3 plus the base. Base at dish has now 1.77. This will give you a dish, will give you uh, 2.07 gram. Okay, 0.3 plus 1.77 that's what we will get is an it's it's heavier uh, medicated suppository is heavier than the blank suppository and this is the case for all suppositories or medicated suppositories why because in most cases the density of the drug is higher than the density of the base okay for that and the medicated suppository is heavier than the blank suppository. طيب. Now, in this table, طبعاً you don't need to memorize it, but in this table you will find the density factor of drugs in cacao butter. Is a drug must be specified, will base must be specified. Is and what you see here, drug with cacao butter 1.3, drug with cacao butter 1.2, and so on. Uh, if you go to reference textbooks, most of them will give you the density uh, of the drug with the base cacao butter. Why cacao butter? Can, can I ask you this question? Why do you think rarely or we will not have a lot of information about the density factors of drugs, methylene with PEG? Okay, we might find it, of course, but it's not as common as drugs with cacao butter type one reason is cacao butter is the oldest uh, base that received so much studies okay that's why a lot of information is available for cacao butter but for PEG type we have information of course but you already know that we will be using usually more than one PEG and we may even control the quantity of each one of the PEG so for PEG it differs from one formulation to another the density of of PEG will be different according to how much I use for example from PEG 4000 and how much from PEG 1650 for example so the base here is not a constant. Bainama cacao butter is something constant, has a certain density that is known. But for PEG, I can change the PEGs 
So I can have different values of uh, density factor. Is this clear? Okay. Now let's go to the next part, which which is talking about packaging and storage. So how do we package the suppositories, and how do we store them? In small scale. طبعاً you don't see this uh, commonly in the pharmacy, but in a small scale, I can package the suppository in partition boxes. They will be in the upright position. يعني مش نايمين وقفين upright position in these packages. Okay, وقفين. Okay. طيب. طبعاً this is in a small scale. If you are preparing it uh, in a small scale. Uh, now, if you are using uh, glycerinated gelatin, remember that we studied about this and we said that such suppositories are hydrophob uh, hi uh, sorry, uh, uh, hydrophobic, uh, hydrophilic and they are hygroscopic. Hygroscopic. Hygroscopic, يعني they would love to absorb water. طبعا if they absorb water they will soften وبصير عندنا microbial contamination etc etc so we need to package them not in these uh, partition boxes we need a tightly closed glass containers شو معنى tightly again it has a definition it should not allow air in or out that's the definition of tightly closed طبعا uh, most of the commercial suppositories are wrapped or prepared in aluminium foil or uh, plastic اللي هو polyvinyl chloride مع polyethylene polyvinyl chloride مع polyethylene طبعا uh, you see here a plastic package this is uh, aluminium foil uh, to package the commercially available suppositories. طيب, we already talked about uh, methods of uh, preparing suppositories. What are these methods? حكينا. One, the hand rolling. Two, compression molding. Three, fusion molding. Then, uh, uh, we uh, talked about uh, the storage. Uh, uh, condition uh, sorry packaging now we talked about the packaging and now we are going to talk about a special type of packaging special because it's uh, rarely used no it's because it's recent and the way it's done that's why we are saying it's special now what happens is the primary packaging is itself the uh, uh, mold. The primary package, who will mold nafso? Okay, so you are preparing the suppository by fusion molding. The sonal mold, who will the primary package? Now, this term is important. You may be asked, what do we mean by primary package? Shu manat primary package? Does anybody know? Well, packaging can be classified as primary, secondary, tertiary packaging. The primary is the package immediately surrounding the drug. It's in contact with the drug immediately. Nehkilo primary package. Type for suppositories, the a few suppositories or melted suppositor, uh, uh, suppositories, they will be poured directly into the primary package. طيب, what will happen after that? After that, they need to uh, cool down. And then, after cooling, they will be trimmed and then sealed and then cut into the desired number of suppositories. Okay, يعني خلينا نرجع شوال. Look at this one. What you see here, the shape of the suppository, is itself the ish, the mold. 
and it is the primary packaging لانه it's in contact directly with the suppository so you pour the melted material of suppositories into this mold بعدين you trim it then you seal it with heat and pressure and then you cut it into the required number of suppositories in each strip okay I will show you before I move I will show you a video uh, regarding uh, the preparation of suppositories in its primary packaging Okay, what you see here, this is the primary packaging. Itself, it will be the mold. Okay, you see here a hopper. This hopper will contain ash, will contain the melted material which will be injected in these openings. Okay, and each hole uh, passes uh, under the hopper will be filled with the required. Uh, quantity of melted material طبعاً, these are after being filled they will uh, get to this part where they will roll okay and then uh, they will be uh, cooled down okay Okay, you see here the melted material, okay, in the hopper. Now, what you saw is the injection of the required quantity of the melted material into each of the holes. Now he will take uh, these rolls uh, into a cooling station where it will be trimmed and then sealed and then cut into the required number of suppository in each uh, package. <laughs> Okay, uh, you saw here every five are cut together. Okay, طبعاً you can determine that uh, in the machine. Okay, the other thing is regarding the storage. Cacao butter, we already learned that it will melt uh, above 30 degrees Celsius, يعني 30 to 35. 
So we actually can store it in the uh, uh, room or at room temperature, but it's preferable to store it in a refrigerator because if you have suppository uh, with cacao butter that is in the metastable uh, uh, state, then it can melt even below 30 degrees Celsius. That's why it's preferable to put it in a refrigerator. طب شو الديفينيشن تاع الريفريجريتور؟ طبعا it uh, should be below 8 degrees أو let's say from 2 to 8 degrees Celsius. Glycerinated gelatin melts uh, or let's say can be stored in a controlled room temperature. طيب شو يعني controlled room temperature؟ It means most of the time the temperature is between 20 to 25 degrees Celsius. Now, this temperature is required to be maintained in the pharmacy. يعني لما تدخلوا الفارماسي, you will see that each pharmacy must maintain, لازم تخلي, the temperature between 20 to 25 degrees Celsius. طيب, uh, وإحنا شعرفنا, how can we know that the temperature is 20 to 25 degrees Celsius? You will find, inshallah, when you go for your training, that Each pharmacy must have thermometers uh, located in different places of the pharmacy. And the pharmacist must record the temperature. Yani for example, three times every day, they must have a record where they record the temperature. So glycerinated gelatin can be uh, stored at control, controlled room temperature. Amma, for suppositories that are made For, from PEG, polyethylene glycol, then we can easily store it at room temperatures, not necessarily controlled. Not necessarily controlled, it doesn't mean that it can be 40 degrees Celsius. Okay? But there will be a fluctuation for temperature more than uh, in this case. Okay? Why polyethylene glycol uh, is Uh, more tolerable to temperature changes لأنه melting point can be controlled by the manufacturer usually the manufacturer will set the melting point for example to be 35 uh, degrees Celsius or even more فبالتالي that's why it can be safely stored at room temperature we have to be careful uh, regarding uh, high humidity or extreme dryness Because uh, for some suppositories like glycerinated gelatin at high humidity, it will ish, absorb moisture and will become soft or spongy. While at extreme dryness, it might lose water and become uh, uh, brittle. Is it clear? So what we learned about so far, we learned about uh, how to manufacture uh, uh, suppositories or how to prepare them in a small scale and large scale. For the small scale, I can use hand rolling. But can I use compression molding? Yes, I can. Can I use fusion molding? Yes, I can. But for large scale, they can use compression molding or a fusion molding. Which one is the most common? Taban the fusion molding. And Not only it's most common, it must be used with most uh, suppositories. Now, testing suppositories. Okay, let's say you have prepared suppositories. What tests do apply to suppositories? First, you have to inspect them visually. Okay, you have to see them. Is there any crack? Is there uh, any, uh, for example, there are some spots Uh, fee suppositories etc etc so you have to visually do the inspection to make sure uh, that their appearance is uh, normal or as required another test that can be done the content uniformity again if you remember content uniformity we said that you take individual uh, units in this case You take uh, suppositories, each one, and then you analyze how much drug is in each one. Taban, you need them to be ish uniform. Okay? 
now, uh, what could be the reason why they are not uniform? Taban, there can be several reasons. One of them, if you are melting your suppository and then you are adding, dispersing the drug particles in the suppository, the melted base, yani, and then you want to pour it in the mold, what can happen? During the period when you uh, disperse the drug and you want it to pour, the drug particles settle down. يعني كان عندي let's say الهوبر أو container and this is the melted melted suppository containing the drug distributed evenly. Now I wanted to pour it into the uh, mold, okay? جيت بدي أضيفه على المول while during this time راحوا هدول ال particles settle down. شو بصير عنا؟ First you will start pouring ash only the base and afterwards you'll be pouring down uh, concentrated drug okay that's why you might have differences في uh, uniformity of content another important thing that you need to do only with oleogenous suppositories or hydrophobic suppositories اللي هي melting range test this is important because for oleogenous suppositories or hydrophobic suppositories the release of the drug depends on melting so that's why you need to do that and I'm sure you are familiar with the uh, melting point equipments probably in organic chemistry uh, such uh, uh, apparatus can be used for determining the melting point range. Drug release, you need to make sure that uh, the drug release from the suppository is uh, adequate to provide systemic action because for drugs for systemic action, you need uh, to make sure that the drug is released probably from the suppository base. Now, the problem is uh, there are some in vitro dissolution tests, but uh, there are a lot of problems with them. That's why if you go to the pharmacopoeia, uh, you will not actually find uh, a, a certain dissolution test for suppositories. That's why uh, you need to, uh, or the company needs to devise uh, its own tests in vitro or conduct an in vivo test. In vivo test, يعني they need to try it on human volunteers. Okay? We have also resistance to rupture. اللي هي uh, very similar to resistance to crushing. Okay? Very, very similar to that. So here we are measuring uh, whether the suppositories or biseries. Biseries اللي حكينا ايش هي? Vaginal suppositories are called biseries. We want to make sure that uh, such suppositories can uh, withstand or tolerate handling including hitta when the patient takes it to insert it in the rectum. Uh, what we will have at, uh, at that point a little pressure on the suppositories to be inserted uh, inside the rectum. So we want to make sure that these suppositories can withstand such uh, uh, rigorous handling. Now, uh, do we do it for any type of suppositories? The answer is no. We only do it for oleogenous or hydrophobic suppositories. Why? Because the water-soluble suppositories such as glycerinated gelatin is uh, resilient and flexible فما بزبط فيها crushing it will not it will not uh, rupture why because of gelatin gelatin is uh, viscous material okay and uh, elastic so uh, we only do it for hydrophobic uh, suppositories so in this case what will happen you see the, the i added this diagram because it looks nicer but uh, even if you look here, you will find that there are two jaws, 
one stationary jaw اللي هو lower وفي عنا ال upper jaw فكين كيف ال resistance to crushing in tablets we have two jaws one is movable one is stationary we also have the uh, same same thing so a pressure a pressure is applied to the suppository okay pulling the uh, upper jaw down how by putting weights here okay so what we are doing we are attempting to break or to crush or to rupture the suppository uh, between these two jaws now I continue to increase weight until the suppository uh, breaks here now then I have to determine what weight caused the suppository to break uh, now as you know that uh, oleogenous suppositories or hydrophobic suppositories they are affected by temperature because they can melt that's why you need to keep the suppository in controlled uh, temperature during the test because you don't want uh, uh, the temperature to affect the uh, rupture of the suppository that's why it will be ish inside a thermostated chamber to make sure that the temperature remains the same طيب uh, again what is the uh, aim or the goal of this test the goal is to make sure that the suppositories are or can withstand handling uh, rigors of normal handling uh, or not uh, now I added this one to your note a good result in Nuikun for each suppository at least it can tolerate up to 1.8 to 2 kilogram of pressure okay يعني إنه هدول 1.8 to 2 kilogram at least are required to break the suppositories the last test I want to talk about is the disintegration test now in the pharmacopoeia this disintegration test is available for pharmacopoeia and uh, it actually substitute to some extent the dissolution test okay طيب, let me explain to you the test look at the figure here what do you see you have a beaker that can accommodate uh, four liters of a liquid which is usually water hot water طبعا controlled at uh, 36 to 37 degrees Celsius inside there is inside this uh, beaker you will see a, a cylinder here okay glass can be plastic as well but it has to be transparent open from uh, the bottom and the top and inside them we have two perforated discs شايفين هذا this is one disc and this is another one that that is both of them are fitted into the open cylinder okay طبعا both of them are attached together يعني they are together attached في عنا هون something to hold them together and also hold them with the uh, open cylinder okay the distance between uh, this perforated disc and the other one is about three centimeters okay so the assembly inside at the beginning is not fitted to the outer cylinder is and because I have the two discs attached to each other I need to put the suppository in between them بعدين I need to fit that into the glass cylinder that you see here then I need to immerse it في a beaker containing 4 liter of water I will have here magnetic stirrer to ensure that at all times the liquid is being stirred now every 10 minutes you need to uh, revolve 
this assembly upside down يعني هذا that's why you see this one if you see thread here or ribbon here that every 10 minutes will flip the assembly to the other side every 10 minutes okay it will flip it طيب now here you'll put one suppository and you need to use or to do the same test three times okay يعني total suppositories that will be tested are three suppositories okay each time one suppository will be uh, placed between the two disks perforated disks again you fit it fill uh, open cylinder from top and bottom the cone usually from the glass you put it inside the beaker okay you leave it 10 minutes and then it flips you need to flip it okay طبعاً usually this is done automatically by the machine is that clear طيب for how long if you are dealing with uh, oleogenous suppositories oleogenous suppositories are supposed to melt for such suppositories after 30 minutes you need to inspect now as I said you'll be using three suppositories each uh, each time you will use one suppositories for three times now all the suppositories must have uh, dissolved or not dissolved sorry disintegrated how do you know that it's disintegrated nothing will be here and all of the drag will be or all of the base will be floating like no oil will oil is lighter than water so it will be floating here is that is it clear Fine. but for water soluble or miscible bases then you need to wait for 60 minutes at that time all of the drag on the base is released from the disks and uh, may be precipitated here okay the undissolved parts okay in this assembly from Erwika, which is a famous German company, you see an apparatus for the water bath, for the beakers that can hold four liters, and for the assembly, which is two perforated disks with cylinder, glass cylinder, open from the bottom and the top. Please watch or observe how. They are fitted into a rotor that will flip them every 10 minutes. Okay, so I put one suppository in each one. If the apparatus that I have only have one beaker, then I have to repeat to do the same thing three times. The first one and another two times. Okay. طيب. Again, شو هو ال passing? The passing is no. For uh, hydrophobic suppositories, at uh, 30 minutes, they should have uh, uh, melted. بالنسبلة water soluble suppositories, they have to be uh, dissolved or uh, dispersed in 60 minutes. Okay? I will show you a video uh, about this. طبعاً, this video which I will show you does not uh, show you the uh, uh, the suppository itself, but it shows you the equipment and how it works. You see here the two desks fitted into the uh, open cylinder from top and bottom. Suppository will be here. See now it has flipped. So every uh, 10 minutes, this will happen. Okay? طيب, شو هو passing? In all the suppositories that you have tested, the LUMA 3, uh, dissolve or melt during uh, the specified time. طيب, شو specified time? For hydrophobic suppositories, 30 minutes. And for water-soluble suppositories, 60 minutes. طيب. By this we have Alhamdulillah we have completed all uh, the uh, topics in pharmaceutical dosage forms 
I hope you enjoyed my presentation. I hope uh, that my presentations were clear. Uh, if you have any suggestion to improve the presentation, you are more than welcome to uh, give me your suggestion. Uh, thank you so much and wish you the best in your final exam.